Praise the Lord. Akasa <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for loving us with eternal love. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Be faithful. So good. Mari Subragadi Shala Zundara Bakuru Subradi. Ah, Shirebo Shila Bazundara Basikra Bajikada. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. Give him praise. 
give him the fruit of your lips. God is good. And we can testify to the goodness of the Lord. But the word says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Glory to God. So this scripture means that the goodness of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord, shall pursue, pursue you, pursue us all the days of our life. As long as we dwell in the house of the Lord, His goodness is chasing after us. His mercy will continue to follow us. That's a great testimony. If that is your testimony this morning, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Goodness and mercy. It is surely, it's non negotiable. It's a guarantee, it's guaranteed that the goodness of the Lord, that his mercy follows us. Glory to God. It's a powerful testimony to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Let it be a testimony that you will experience the goodness of the Lord and that his mercy will override every judgment of the enemy. That his mercy will speak for you. Glory to God. Scripture says, a man cried out to the Lord and said, Jesus, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy. Bible says he shouted with a loud voice. He knew what he needed, and he sought after it. His voice was heard. He couldn't be silent. First of all, he knew Jesus. He knew his lineage. He recognized his genealogy, his lineage, that he is the son of David. And so he personalized it. Jesus. He did not say Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Jesus the Son of David. Have mercy. I need mercy. He screams humility. Glory to God. That even when he was uh, he was he, 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 he could be silenced or he was silenced, he shouted even the more. He was desperate for his miracle. And that caught the attention of the Lord. And this prayer, when you call on the mercy of God, despite the situation, call on Jesus, the son of David, after the order of blind Bartimaeus. Shout at Jesus like blind Bartimaeus did. Call him the son of David. To show you mercy. It doesn't matter what the condition is. It doesn't matter what the situation is. His mercies are new every morning. And the word says, His mercies are new every morning and great is His faithfulness. Glory to God. This week, let the, your testimony be the goodness of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, the Lord wants us to talk about angels, angelic beings. Hallelujah. We often hear about angels, 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 this, angels, that. The whole of scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, the scripture records about the accounts of angels, encounters. Glory to God. How they helped men. 
how they deliver different messages, how different men, the servants of God, encountered angels. And so often we hear angels, angels, glory to God. By the grace of God, the Lord wants us to teach on angels in series. Glory to God. You don't want to miss out. Because you really want to know who these special beings are and what they do. Glory to God. And so we're going to begin with the nature. The nature of angels. The scripture says, Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 1, if you uh, go to verse 14, it says, Amplified says, and not all the angels, ministering spirits sent out by God to serve those who will inherit salvation. Glory to God. New King James Fashion says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Glory to God. Are not all angels all the angels, not some, ministering spirits. So they are spirit beings sent out by God. God sends them on errands to serve. In other words, to accompany, to protect those who will inherit salvation. Of course they are. Of course, angels are. They are special beings. In other words, they are messengers of God. And most often, we ordinarily understand a race of spiritual beings of a nature exalted far above that of man although infinitely removed from that of God, whose office, primary office of him is to do him service in heaven. By the time we go through this teaching, you will have a clear picture how millions, thousands of angels surround the throne of God, surround God, and basically, are at the back and call of the creation of things. Glory to God. So they are appointed to suffer and also to defend us, defend men in the earth. Mention of the word angel, and you get many images. It would depict him with different images, symbolism. When a child is doing well in school, when a child is well behaved, you often say, Oh, he's an angel. He's an angel. He's so sweet. Most times we defeat angels as guiding angels. People in heaven would have. Reverence, reverence in God, day in, day out. Glory to God. But nature, oh, the nature of angels, what does the word of God say about the nature? Of course, we have read that they are spirits. From the opening spoken scripture, the Hebrews chapter 14. Again, it says, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Glory to God. What this says to me is as a child of God, as a believer, 
you can utilize the ministry of angels. You can call on angels to help you because they are to, they're supposed to serve us. So you call forth angels, you command them by the unction of the Holy Ghost. In any area you need help, there are angels of help. There are angels of blessing. There are angels of wealth. There are warfare angels, as for example, Michael. Glory to God. There are angels of favor. There are messenger angels. You can send your angel on an errand for you. Glory to God. They are ministering spirits tends to serve those who will inherit salvation. Of course, God created the angels. And the question will be when? When did he create them? Let's go to scripture. In Job chapter 38, I'll read from verse 4. It says, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? God was talking to Job. Glory to God. Tell me if you have understood who determined his measures. Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To, to what were its foundations fastened? Who laid it? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, all the sons of God, these are angels. Glory to God. So, although the scripture does not specifically mention when God created the angels, for some time from scripture before the world was even created. We don't know if it was a day before, a thousand years before, we can be so sure. Scripture did not specify what we know that the angelic beings were created even before the foundation of the world. And their number per scripture are very large, innumerable. So much said that scripture recorded in Hebrews chapter 12, if you read verse 26, 22, I'm sorry, it says, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful love. Innumerable company of angels. The Bible says they are innumerable. Glory to God. There are, there are a lot of them doing different jobs, functioning in their different offices. We also know of scripture that the word of God that angels have enormous, enormous strength, great strength and The famous captured this in one Psalm 103, verse 20. It says, Bless the Lord, you his angel, who has sent him. Who do his work, feeding the boy of his Good God. Who excel his angel. Revelations chapter 5, verse number 2. And if you read chapter 18 to 20, we'll describe angels as might. And their activity, they're not just mighty, but they, their activity are marvelous. Let's read that real quick. This is going to give you a clear picture of the nature of the angels. That scripture says, 
Revelation 18:20. It says, Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great milestone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anywhere. It is like a great milestone. First of all, the angel described here by John was a mighty angel. Glory to God. They are mighty. And they have strength. Glory to God. The Bible says, like a great milestone. They threw the sea, they, they stood into the sea forcefully. Hallelujah. Scripture also described this angelic queen as having varied appearances. And the appearance depends on circumstances. But most often, Scripture described these beings in this form. Revelations chapter. If you read verse 1 to 2, capture the appearance of angels. It says, I saw still another mighty angel come, coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and the rainbow was on his head, and his feet was like a cloud, and his feet like pillars of fire. Verse number 2 says, He had a little and he sent his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the sea. This gives you a good picture of one of the description of the appearances of angel beings. So what we're seeing here is that angel number one as spirit being. According to scripture in Hebrews 1.14, they do not essentially have physical form. Not yet, but they are spirits. But it definitely suggests or seems like angels have the ability to take human form. They are spirits. But when they are performing a particular task, or when they need to perform a particular assignment, sometimes they take human form. We have an example of that situation in Genesis chapter 18. The Bible says the God and two angels appeared as men with God and actually had a meal. You can read it up or study it in Genesis 18. I believe from verse 1 to 19. So they physically appeared, they took human form and appeared before Abraham. An angel, that's not the only angel. Angels appear as men many times through the Bible. You see an encounter in Joshua chapter 5. If you read through that, verse 13 to 14, and then the Gospel of Mark 16, verse number 5. God. So the angelic creator described in Isaiah the vision of Isaiah. Lord, Isaiah chapter 2. But if you study Ezekiel chapter 10 or Revelations 4 through 5, the appearance of angels are very really familiar with this prophetic depiction. So angels have form of spiritual body, but likely we are currently capable of truly understanding their form. And so angels also have the ability to take on other forms, like I said, as humans, in order to appear to us in a manner we 
I've heard stories of people that had experience and he could tell they appear as hard as to help you when you're when you're in need of help or you need, and you just know that you have an encounter and an angel. And how do you know? Because you will not have trace of such individuals or such to make. I had numerous stories. You just know that you had a distribution. Hallelujah. So they take human form in order to appear to God in a manner that we can do. There's a, a particular characteristic in the appear. Whenever angels did appear to humans, even in the scripture, it resulted in amazing. And I encourage you to study Daniel chapter number 20. And it was kind that your spirit means. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, in scripture, one example was in Mark, if you read verse 5. The Bible says, And entering the tomb, they saw a young man, clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were up. They were frightened. Go to God. An angel was guarding the tomb of To human life. Angels are immortal. They are holy and white. white One thing about angels, they don't go outside the boundary of the They execute that specific, specific assignment because from them you can help. Glory to God. You see that in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel, when Daniel prayed and his prayer was head up in the second heaven. And Michael had to come and help. Glory to God. After that assignment was done, that was it. Michael did not do any extra things. So they have specific assignment, and once they carry it out, that's it. It's as if they will get more permission, another permission for them to execute another task. Literally, glory to God. So, but one thing we need to know is that angels are immortal. Let's go to Luke chapter 20 to substitute that they are immortal. It says, None can they die anymore, nor can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons, sons of the resurrection. This scripture is talking about life after, after death in the physical body. We inherit eternal salvation, eternal, eternal life. And so he says, No, can they die anymore? For they are equal to the angels. So angels can die. So when we die physically, we inherit our eternal life. And so our soul can attain. So we become equal like the angels. Refers to as then we are trans transformed as being sons of the So you see, angels are immortal. They are holy. Matthew 25 says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory 
and all the holy things. Then he will sit on the throne of his throne. The Bible says, and his holy So Jesus himself testified that the angels are finished. Angels are wise, angelic beings. Angelic beings are wise. Let's go read the read second Psalm 14 and say to bring about those things of happiness, your servant Joah has done it. But my Lord is wise. According to the wisdom of the angel of God, to know everything that is in the world. So it's wise. According to the wisdom of the angel. They have the wisdom. And none must be Hallelujah. What else is the nature of the angel? They possess emotions. You see, emotions are responsible about how we humans feel. Whether you're sad, whether you're happy, whether you, you are, are irritable, peaceful, you know, emotions. Go to God. And just as emotions. And so scripture says in Luke 15, in the same way, that is just in the presence of God in God. When even one sin are returned. Hallelujah. In the same I tell you that we rejoice in the presence of the angels of God over one sin. So they rejoice. There's a jubilation in heaven. When a sinner is seen. So if angels didn't have emotions, they wouldn't be able to be happy when somebody gets saved, like we are saved, right? That's, that, that, that tells me they have emotions. The Bible says there is excitement. There is jubilation in heaven when a sinner repents. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are we, are we learning something? Is the Lord helping us? Hallelujah. I said angels have different offices, jurisdictions. And so when you go to scripture, especially the prophetic scriptures, Isaiah, Daniel, you know, particularly Isaiah recorded his prophetic vision. In Isaiah 6, it read from verse 1 through 4, 4 or 5. As I had a vision. In 2 Kings 22, believe verse 19. If you read Daniel 7 and Revelations by John, Revelations all captured the prophetic glimpses of the prophets. Time will not permit me to read the scriptures for you. You can study the scripture, read them, and you have an idea. Holy Spirit will talk to you. You have an idea. The offices, various offices of the angels. Or perhaps I will read Isaiah 1 to 4. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the host of the earth will shake him, and the voice of him will cry back, and the crowd will kill him. The prophet 
Capturing vaguely, prophetically, the offices of the country. Another prophetic claim is one captured by the Lord and recorded in Genesis. It reads verse 19. And it says, I want to one. And the ancient of days was eaten. The spirit was black. And the hair of his head was my pure blue. His throne was the very thing. And it, it, his will was a burning fire. Glory to God. Verse 10 is spectacular. He says, A fairy stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousand ministers to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand the cut. The cut was the thousand thousands ministered to the ancient of this this means the angel, the host of angels. And so, like I said, of their office in heaven, we only have big prophetic glimpses as recorded in this. John recorded an encounter too. It's the Revelation 6 11 says, Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest the little. And to put the number of the holy servants who could be killed as they were. Glory to God. Verse 11. there's one in all the prophetic glimpses of the office of angel all have in common. All are all the visions, all are visions of angels and Jesus. All these visions are visions of angels in Jesus in heaven that show us nothing but a never ceasing adoration. And so, what they are representing as being in the wider sense, agents of God's providence, natural when they take human as supernatural. Natural and supernatural to the body and to the soul. And so angels summarily in heaven are crisis ministers of grace. Now, as they shall be of judgment day, according to scripture in Matthew 6, 39. Let me, let me read that scripture very quick. Matthew 13, verse uh, 49. I'm sorry. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth. So the angels are Christ ministers of grace now, as they will be in doing judgment. Hallelujah. If you read that Gospel of Matthew, also, chapter 24, verse 21, that scripture says, And he will send his angel with the great sound of the trumpet, and they will guard his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So to me, this sound. Now, on the day of judgment to come, that day, that judgment will be ready. 
And so, Samuel really, you can say that they were ministering to him. God. So this is just to give you a, 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 a glimpse of the nature of the angelic being. I want you to do well to follow up as we will teach about the victories and the partners of angels in the next, as by the special grace of God, as the Lord of the name. The whole teaching about angels will be a point. God wants us to talk thoroughly about the ministry of angels. And so this is just covering the next of angels. So when you hear angels, angels, angels that's the whole of scripture, which is the only the absolute name of the word of God. I take not for a minute. Sent for the minister. The service of the sector. If you can call on an angel to help you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they will answer. Heaven will assign them to work for you. Have that understanding. And the Lord bless you. Glory to God. They are willing, but sisters, you just got to call on them. And this is one thing I need you to understand if you're listening to me that you don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be a prophet. It's not limited to uh, people in calling to the fivefold ministry: pastor, evangelist, prophet, pastor, teacher, any child of any believer can utilize the ministry. You call them forth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the unction of the Holy Spirit, we call them forth. We call them. They are ready. They are ready. Everybody to assist us. In the next video, I'll talk about how the minister to believers, the minister to believers, and the minister alike from believers. God sends them to carry out certain duties to us, the believers, and even to Unbelievers, especially when it comes to judgment, to render judgment. We know about this, the story of Saddam and Gamal, how angels were sent to break the bad news of God's judgment to destroy the people. So do well to follow us as we will be teaching on the victories and the honor of the Lord the Lord bless and empower you in Jesus' mighty name. This is a week of faith of God. This is a week that the goodness and the mercy of God will fall on you like never before. This is a week that the blessings of God are making you be granted on you. This is a week that you will be marvelously helped. This is a week that you will not lack. You cannot be struck. You will not be disadvantaged. You will be at the right place at the right time, meeting the right people, making the right decisions. You stay focused this week. Glory to God. Like Peter, you will not lose focus. When you're walking on that water, God, God, the scripture says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. In him we live and move and have our being. We will not lose focus. 
you're still on track and you fulfill your purposes, your God given assignments in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The grace and the blessings of God be multiplied to you. Do well to subscribe to my YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, the community, and the Lord.